Welcome. Let's do something unusual today. Let's look at the squangular numbers. It's a word I've invented and I'm sure other people have thought of it too, for a number that's both square and triangular. I'm not going to go deep into the mathematics here. I'm going to refer us to an essay on Theon's Ladder. Uh, Theon's Ladder is how you spell this fellow's name, uh, which I'm posting on the website. I'll have all the mathematics there. But I just want to share with you the idea behind squangular numbers and get you excited about them because I think they're actually kind of cool and weird. Here goes. Let's uh, start the basics. Let's first talk about the square numbers. So the ancient Greeks, you know, around uh, 300 BC upwards and so forth, um, loved playing with, with geometry and number. To them, all was geometry. So they particularly interested in which numbers had nice geometric arrangements attached to them. For example, the square numbers are the following. Are the numbers that whose numbers of pebbles can be arranged into square designs. And here's a 2x2 a two two square, here's a 3x3 three three square, here's a 4x4 four four square, and off I go, drawing lots and lots of dots. But I get a 1x1 one one square gives me 1 dot, a 2x2 two two square represents 4 dots, 3x3 three three is 9 dots, 16, 25, 36, and so on, 49. So these are the square numbers. In fact, uh, I'll denote them the capital S, and I say the nth square number is just going to be n times n, n squared. So for example, the number 100 is the tenth square number, the number 1 million is the thousandth square number, and so on. The triangular numbers are the numbers that arise from ranging dots into triangular patterns. Uh, the first dot's always weird. That's not much of a triangle, nor was it much of a square to begin with. But then we'll have one row of 1, one row of 2, gives us triangle number of 3. A row of 1, a row of 2, a row of 3, gives us a triangle number of 6. 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, gives us 10 dots. You can check adding five, another row of 5 makes 15, add a row of 6 makes 21, add a row of 7 makes 28, add a row of 8 makes 36, add a row of 9 makes 45, and so on. These are called the triangle numbers. And I'll just call it Tn, and it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n. A row of 1, a row of 2, plus a row of 3 all the way up to a row of n. There's a formula for the nth triangle number. Uh, actually, I can make this a little more compact. Uh, let's see, I need some space. Uh, let me just remove this little part here. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Well, actually, I don't even want to move that. Uh, suppose I wanted to work out the tenth triangle number. Uh, most people see a sum like this and think, think to add the first and the last terms. But um, I actually find it much easier not to do that and do a technique that's actually attributed to Gauss. Suppose I want to work out the sum of all the numbers 1 up to 10. I don't know what it is. Let's call it x. Let's write the same sum again, but backwards underneath. Da, 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 all the way up to 3 plus 2 plus 1. Well, the same sum backwards must also be x. Let's add these two sums together. How's that for a straight line? Uh, 1 plus 10 is 11, plus 2 plus 9 is 11, plus 3 plus 8 is 11. In fact, I get a whole bunch of 11s plus 11 plus 11 must equal x plus x, twice the sum I need. How many 11s do I have? Well, it came from a string of 10 terms, so I must have 10 11s. 10 11s equals twice the answer I desire. Therefore, the answer I desire is 10 times 11 all over 2. That happens to be 55. In general, the nth triangle number is going to be n, n plus 1 over 2. You'll have n groups of one more than the number you want, and that'll be double the sum you need. So there's a formula for the nth triangle number if you're interested. But what I really want to note here is look at which numbers are common to the list. For example, 1 is both a square number and a triangular number. Okay, in a trivial way, not very exciting. But look at 36. 36 pebbles can be arranged in a 6 by 6 array, and also 36 pebbles can be arranged into a triangle with 8 rows. So I'm going to call a number that's both square and triangular, squangular. Squangular is the second triangular number, 1, 36. We like to pause this video and try to find the next squangular number. It's a bit of work, but you can do it. So here's a moment to pause. Okay, that's it. I will tell you the next squangular number turns out to be uh, 1,225. And the one after that turns out to be 41616. And the one after that turns out to be 48, oh gosh, 024900. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So what I'd like to just to tease you with is a little formula for the nth squangular number, which is due to Euler. Though I actually give the full details in the essay I'm posting on the website. So here are the squangular numbers. I'll call them QN. So it goes 1, 36, 
1225 41616 4802 900. Next one turns out to be huge 1,631,432,000. Well, this is the first square number equaling the first triangle number. This is the sixth square number equaling the eighth triangle number. This one turns out to be the 35th square number equaling the 49th triangle number. This one turns out to be the 204th square number equaling the 288th triangle number and so on. So what Leonard Euler did in the 1700s, he actually focused on these numbers here. And he found a formula for them, which meant that we then had a formula for the squangular numbers to square the formula for the, for the subscripts of the square numbers. And I'm going to give it to you. Here it is. Euler discovered that the nth squangular number is given by 3 plus the square root of 8, all raised to the nth power, minus 3 minus the square root of 8, all raised to the nth power, all over 2 times the square root of 8, that's the subscript of the square part, so the nth squangular number is that number squared. The proof, believe it or not, is actually not too bad, but we do need some work with Theon's ladder first, and I'll give you all the details behind this amazing formula for the nth squangular number in the essay I'm posting on the website. That's it, just a teaser. Thanks very much.